What's going on, YouTube world? Welcome back to Little Bit Man Gaming, bringing you title on shoulder means only one thing: SmackDown review. Uh, first things first is we can get you to hit that like, subscribe, and share and the notification button. Also, leave me a comment down below if you like videos like these. You have your opinions about uh, SmackDown. Let me know. Tell me what you liked about uh, SmackDown. Uh, you know, compared to what you think, how I felt about SmackDown, or you know, let me know if I missed something. Let me, just let me know at, in general what you thought of the show. But um, yeah, if you could do all those great things, I greatly appreciate it because we got to get to a goal 100 subscribers. So I really need you to subscribe and share. But also, like and comment. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> pretty much, not much happened big. So this won't be like a, I'm a, I always say this, but then it ended up being like a 20 minute video. I'm going to try to make this a short video because nothing really big, nothing really like too much to really expand on or spend like a lot of time talking. Um, as usual, first set me on the night, Roman Reigns opened up SmackDown. You know, he, he, he expressed, he, he expresses, um, Anger towards Edge for not still for still not yet acknowledging him as the main event of WrestleMania, and um, and you know and choosing him and yet and he called you know he he's calling Edge a coward, you know in in his promo he's calling him a coward so he don't want to face me because he knows what I'm gonna do to him, and then he said now let's turn our attention towards the Elimination Chamber. Which is what Adam Pierce was in the ring for to announce that Roman Reigns would be just like Drew McIntyre would be defending his uh, Universal Championship in the Elimination Chamber. But then Roman Reigns said, you know, let Adam Pierce know he only has to defend, he has to defend the title at Elimination Chamber, but he don't have to defend it inside Elimination Chamber. So, you know, he's using his base, he's trying, I guess they said he's using his power. To um, to basically get over and influence the match. So instead, instead of Roman Reigns defending the title inside the Elimination Chamber, it will be um, just a, a whole. It will be everybody else fighting inside the Elimination Chamber, and um, the winner would face. The winner would stay in the ring to face Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Again, uh, Roman Reigns used his powers for a shortcut, right? Um, so then, with that being said, you know they had a little stare down at the end. I'll be remiss when it said that, you know, that ending of the promo was kind of was kind of cool. You know, Roman getting mad at Adam Pearce for naming the first two competitors that he that it was going to be a series of qualifying matches um, to determine who's going to be in the uh, elimination chamber. And he said the first two people that don't he named two people of the uh two that would qualify, which was uh Jay Uso and um Kevin Owens. You know, cause he felt uh, Adam Pierce said he felt like them two took Roman Reigns to the limit so they don't need to qualify. So he made um he he just ne he gave them their spots, but everybody else would have to qualify. You know, I think, like I said, it's only it's, uh, six men. So, it was only, like, um, two qualifying matches they had throughout the night, which was kind of, I think it was kind of, I, 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 it was quick, but then it was also lazy. I get it. They don't have time to, uh, you know, because Elimination Chamber is next Sunday. But I still feel like it was lazy and, and not properly built. But that's just me nitpicking. So, the first qualifying match which was also the first match of the night, was Mysterio, was Mysterio, Ray Mysterio, I said Mysterio, Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Sami Zayn and King Corbin. And the way how they did it was like, right before that, it was like a little backstage promo where Adam Pearce trying to basically figure out how he was going to set this up, like how he was, you know, with such a short time in the day, how he was going to have... These how he was gonna fill the rest of the four spots, and Sonya Deville, who I guess is like his assistant, she uh, helped him by saying that she set up the first, which was the first match of the night. I was just mentioned earlier, was that 
she she had the idea of having Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio versus Dominic Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Sami Zayn and King Corbin, and the winner, the winning team, would be, would take the next two spots in it, like as in, you know, even though we know the Elimination Chamber is every man for itself, so that means it's Rey Mysterio and Dominic would win. They would both would enter as separate competitors to compete to see who was going to face Roman Reigns. And vice versa for Sami Zayn and King Corbin. So once that was once that was that, that's it transitioned to that, which was the first match of the night. And that it was actually for the first time I actually was uh enjoy watching Raymond Stereo uh or Raymond Stereo match. Like, you know, it was getting repetitive with the whole King Corbin, then uh Seth Rollins. So they finally get, it was finally fresh to see Dominic and now. It's something uh, that was actually meaningful that had actual had like a stake to it, you know. Because that's what you know to tell a good story, there has to be something at stake. You have to be building towards something. And the, that my problem with the whole King Corbin rivalry and Seth Rollins, it wasn't building towards anything. Like it wasn't building towards a championship match. It wasn't building towards a tag team championship match. It wasn't building towards anything like that. But this match actually had a stipulation, you know, that went towards a world championship. So, it was a good back and forth match. Honestly, I thought uh, Ray Mysterio and Dominic would have won. I actually wanted to see uh, Dominic. I actually wanted Dominic and Ray to win. But in the end, King Corbin and Sammy uh, got the win. It, and it wasn't a ba it wasn't bad cause either or it was a good it was a good trick. I just personally wanted to see uh, Ray Mysterio and his son go in. Um, yeah, then we had a um, we had like a little backstage segment with Sasha Banks talking to uh, Kalisto, which was odd. <laughs> it was it was oddly out of place. Like, why are you talking to Kalisto? But you know, it's neither here nor there, right? And um, yeah, so then you got uh, then you had uh, but you had her talking, and then Reginald came up and basically was uh, trying to apologize for what he did last week when he you know got he tried to speak on her behalf and tell, and telling um Bianca that if she chooses Sasha, she would lose. Um, you know he tried to apologize too, but it's, you know it seemed like you know, her. Reginald and Carmella of the Sun. And it was odd that Carmella was missing from it. Reginald was on the episode, but Carmella was nowhere to be seen this episode. Kind of odd to me. That you had, like, just her helper on the show. You're giving her more spot time. You're giving him more spot time than her now. But, and then, you know, he she... She look at, she look at him with a kind of like a flirtatious look and say, So you really think I... Uh, I'm gonna beat. I could beat. Uh, uh, Bianca Belair can't beat me, and I could beat her. And he said, "Oh yes, for sure." You know, and he uh, he you know as a peace offering, he offered some champagne. But it's something devious about because as he was leaving, she turned. She takes the champagne, started turning back to Kalisto to talk. He looks with a sinister look, like he minded this under the champagne, and then. But that was like the. For me, that was like the sour point of that. The whole, what was the whole point? Having him give her the champagne stuff, but I get to that later because you'll understand. You'll understand more when I'm talking about the segment that they should have led into. But then the, we got the next match of the night, which is match number two, which was Big E uh, defending his uh, title in an open challenge match. It was uh, he had like a op he issued an open challenge to anybody in the back who wants to face him for the uh, championship, other than. I think he's the only caveat was it couldn't have been it could have been um, people he just defeated. It, he wanted somebody new to have an opportunity to become an Intercontinental Champion, you know, to try to beat him and become an Intercontinental Champion, and that's what bring out Apollo Cruz. And Apollo Cruz, I guess you know, before it was revealed it was an open challenge. Apollo Cruz was the one who revealed it was an open challenge because he he was like. Oh, I could, you know, we've been friends for a long time, so I know what you're thinking. You're about to issue an open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. And you know what? I accept. But Big E, you know, Big E was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're like kind of right. Like, you partially right. 
I am about to open. I am about to do an open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. I am about to issue that challenge for anybody back. He said it could be anybody. It could be Michael Cole, Corey Graves. It could be the janitor, security guy. It just can't be you or Sami Zayn, basically, because he's because they had their opportunities multiple times, and they all got beat. And so you know, he said back is you. You both of y'all go to the back of the line. And let me face somebody new. But it uh, like w what I liked about this was, even though this was like in the same vein of the match too, this wasn't like a separate promo. It was like the it was like the start of the match. He was just about to issue the open challenge, Biggie, and then Apollo like gets into what you would call like a. I guess it it, it wasn't like they both was having a microphone and talking to each other. It was like they 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 put down the mic and was having like a heated conversation that was. We like you would say like not supposed to be heard, but of course because the mic was still there, it was still turned on. You heard what they were saying, but they wasn't trying to speak with the mic. They was like basically trying to speak to each other, you know, verbatim. And uh, and uh, he uh, Big E basically was telling him, hey, you know what? You had your opportunity. You had your multiple chances. Now you out here whining for another opportunity. He said, go back to catering. He told him. The take the you know go back to Kaylin, have some food, take your paycheck, you know blah blah blah. This you know get out the ring so I can fight my challenge, my new challenger. And I like that like that almost it was almost like a heelish way how Biggie dismissed Apollo. It was like in it's in, I would say it was like in between like being like being that you no know, we best friends slash brothers and slash heelish. Type of attitude he had towards Apollo. He was like, "Yeah, take you know, just go back to catering, have some food, take your paycheck, you know, basically get out the ring." You know, Apollo was like, "No, I'm not going nowhere." He said, "I'm not going nowhere as long as you have that. I'm gonna be always right here." So you know, Apollo was like, "You know, I don't, I don't care if you how many times you beat me. I still wanna, I, I wanna keep having these opportunities to beat you because I know one of them opportunities I am gonna beat you, but." You know, Big E was like, no, no, get, take your butt back to the, uh, to get out of my ring. He said, now you out here whining. So they basically get into an argument. Then, you know, right in the middle of, right in the middle of them arguing, he, you know, he takes the mic and say, bring out my next challenger. And it uh, ended up being Sisuke Nakamura. Now, to wrap this all up, so I won't spend too much time on it. You know, they, they still continue to argue, even when Sisuke was coming out. But in the in the match though, Sensuke and um, Big E was how it looked like it was going to be a decent match, but you know in they back and forth, Big E was about to hit the big ending, but Apollo Cruz, who stayed out, out at ringside, jumped into the ring, hit him with a drop kick to cause uh, hit Big E with the drop kick to cause a disqualification uh, get for Sensuke and Nakamura. That's how the, that's how it works. Whoever gets hit, the other person is disqualified. So in this case, since Big E was the one who got hit, Sensuke was disqualified, giving um, Big E the win, and he retained the title. And then, you know, as we was pro as advertised last week, and you know, even this week, uh, we got the look, we got the actual, you know, segment. We got a segment with uh, Seth Rollins. And uh, we got a segment with Seth Rollins where he finally returned to SmackDown and, you know, cut a promo about him being a father. He just became a father. And um, he uh, was saying how, you know, it changed him. It changed his perspective. Also, I want to note that even though he came back with his Messiah thing at the Royal Rumble, when he came back at, on SmackDown, he had his burn it, burn it down thing, uh, thing. So it makes me want to. It made me think like, okay, they might have turned Seth Rollins face. You know, he, he was talking about how you know having a kid. Usually, sometimes they do that with wrestlers. Like we seen it in the past, some wrestlers that you know once they got a kid, they they transform their character. They turn their character face. You know, they did it with the Miz. You know, they did it. Uh, I forgot who they did it with. They did it with uh, another wrestler before that, but um, yeah. So we basically got we basically got that. You know, you know, he was talking about how he was gonna change, but and he and I noticed too that even though he came back with his uh, face thing, he still his theme still have. Uh, uh, and believe in the vision or something like that on the um, Titan Tron, and he still was dressed like he was a heel, 
and then he basically revealed that he his whole speech about being changed was just that he would now he as a father he wants to be a father to the to the roster of SmackDown and lead them to greatness. Basically, still saying he's still the whole Messiah, of Seth Rollins, and um, and then everybody for some reason too it was odd that they had everybody at ringside and they just basically was like to hell with this and they just walked away. Seth Rollins when the lights came on, Seth Rollins realized that everybody left, which was it was silly. You mean it wasn't like it was that it wasn't that dark? So you mean to tell me you did? You really they couldn't have it darker than that? So you really, so we could really believe that he didn't see everybody leave, but everybody left, and only Cesaro was out there. And then you know like he would try to wait and see if Seth Rollins really changed. And then he realized he didn't change, so Cesaro was the last one to leave. He was leaving, and then Seth Rollins got mad and ran out the ring and attacked uh, Cesaro, beating him up for not. Uh, buying into his vision and then Daniel Bryan came out and attacked because it was announced that the next match you know the, the next match would be Cesaro which was I think was the main event would be Daniel Bryan Cesaro versus Ziggler and uh, Rude and whoever wins would be the ne take the last two spots in the uh, in the National chamber and then we got Liv, uh, Liv Morgan versus Bailey. It was a great match. Still, it was still the same old, same old. Um, yeah, it was just the same old, same old. It was like now, it, now this time instead of uh, Ruby Riot getting again the distraction or uh, distraction causing her to lose against Bailey, it was just Liv Morgan. This time it was still the same result. Liv lost because of distraction from um, Billy uh, Billy K and Ruby just and you know Ruby and Billy K fighting on the outside ring really causing distraction. Causing her to get beat. Then you got the Street Profits versus Otis and uh, Chad uh, Gable. Really didn't care about the match because it really didn't have no really like future tag team child implications. But Street Profits won that. Uh, there was a uh, a promo in ring with which I was getting to was a promo with uh, in ring where Bianca, where uh, Sasha Banks came out and basically was uh, about to cut a promo about why. Again, you know, Bill, uh, Bianca Belair should uh, challenge her at WrestleMania. And my whole thing about the Somalia giving her, about Reginald giving her that uh, wine was, it wasn't no payoff. He didn't, it, you know, she wasn't out there like wobbly. You know, it was, he didn't like spike it or anything. She was just normal. And, they, and then when Bianca came out, she was about to cut the promo uh, Little like she was about to cut a promo about, you know, why she would choose Sasa, but you know she tells Sasa, "I'm not, you're not the boss of me." And then out of left field, Nia Jax and uh, Sergeant Blazer come out confront them. Basically saying, "Why nobody talking about them? They're the ones who became two-time uh, women's tag team champions." And they basically use her to make fun of her. What happened on Monday when she heard when she heard herself and said, "Oh my whole <laughs> It was cool that they revisited. You know that they got into a fight. Uh, now I ended up hurting her whole again. <laughs> but this time she tried, she bit her lip. She didn't want to say it, but she still was feeling the effects of it. Um, yeah. Then we just get to the main event, which is. Uh, Brian and Cesaro versus Ziggler and Rude. Um, not much to say. I mean, it was a great back and forth match. You had spots like you thought. Then you had Sammy and Corbin who already qualified. And um, they came out to look look on, you know, to look on the match. They came, they went back and forth. Almost at times, Ziggler and them almost stole the match. But in the end... A great combination of the torture rack to a bat breaker to the swing and to the sharpshooter led to Cesaro led to Cesaro winning the match. And um for him and Dan Bryan, him and Dan Bryan would now take the final two spots, which means it will be Kevin Owen, Kevin Owens, Jay Uso, um Corbin and Sami Zayn and Cesaro and Bryan. Then, uh, you know, it basically ended up with a brawl with all the participants. And then, out of nowhere, Jay just come out and swings. 
bust uh, hit him over the bat, hit Cesaro over the bat with a uh, chair, which caused uh, Corbin and um, well, they Corbin and Sammy to pull Darren Bryan out the ring, beat him up, and then just broke out to a brawl with everybody coming out, and then and like a, almost an homage to Stone Cold when when it was like I think it was Team WWE versus. Uh, Team WCW or ECW, something like that. It was like a Survivor Series moment where Stone Cold just came out and was beating the hell out of everybody and stunned everybody and left. The villain was side he was going to be on. They had that with Kevin Owens. He basically came out, beat. It basically came out, beat up everybody and beat up some people. Then he just proceeded to stun everybody and stand tall. In the ring, he's just uh, he grabbed he grabbed the chair that uh, Jay Uso used to hit Cesaro with, sat down, you know, and looked into the camera. It was like, "You see me, Roman? Are you watching? I ain't going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. You know, you know, I'll see you soon." So, with that being said, right off the back, I already know I'm going to give it seven big ups, just because I'm disappointed in the Sasa promo. Like it, in the backstage promo that didn't lead to anything, you know, it, it was like some secret thing that was going to happen, but it never happened. That led to an even more disappointing and oddly out of place promo with Bianca Belair and Nia Jackson signed Blazer. Maybe they tried to set up a tag team championship match between them two. I don't know, but it was weird. It was out of place. I didn't care for the oldest versus Street Profits match, and um. I'm trying to figure out if it was anything else other than that. Um, I did. Oh, and the Liv Morgan Bailey. I didn't care for that match either. That's why I gave it seven big ups. Um, but yeah, that's it. If you want more videos like this, if you like videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. Remember, always remember to like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification button because we got a goal of 100 subscribers and we need to get my name out there to the YouTube masses. With that being said, to the next video, peace.